want to get cheat sheets, audiobooks, lessons, apps, and much more every month for free? Just click the link in the description to get your free language gifts of the month. Hello everyone, my name is Marzena and today we will talk about something really yummy which is 10 Polish foods. So here we go. The first one is definitely my favorite one, which is barszcz, borszcz. So in English you usually say borszcz. And we, we do eat borszcz on special occasions. We don't eat it every day. We don't even eat it every week. Uh, unless you buy yourself instant one, but you don't really make it. You make it, at least in my house, once a year, and that's a very, very special occasion, Christmas, and we, we make it with no meat. Uh, so, for example, uh, you can say, podczas wigili je się czerwony barszcz. On Christmas Eve, one eats red borscht, which is totally true. Red borscht or Barszcz, barszcz czerwony, czerwony barszcz. It's a special food for Christmas and actually for, for Christmas Eve. And you don't really need to add this red part because when you say barszcz, it's kind of obvious it's red. We do have another one which we called white barszcz or biały barszcz. And that one is usually served for Eastern. And if you just say borszcz or barszcz, it's, it's always, it's always the red one. And it's very clear. There is almost nothing inside except from uszka, 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 which means, uh, ear or ears. And it's usually some kind of, it's something like pierogi, kind of like, like the dumplings uh, with uh, mushrooms inside, which you put inside of barsht. Please try it at home. Very yummy. Another one is very time consuming, so not a lot of people actually make a proper one, but it's bigos, and in English you usually say bigos as well, which is basically um, like a, a stew made out of uh, chopped cabbage and sauerkraut and meat, uh, you, you put mushrooms inside, and you can put some other things like sausages and stuff. Uh, it really differs uh, between different like how houses and um, that's how my mom made it. Uh, sometimes you put plums as well. Um, and the thing is that it takes time to make it. And like, I mean, like it really takes time to make it. So, well, one could say, bigos gotuje się ponad tydzień. It takes over a week to cook bigos, which is true. If you want to do it the traditional way, it really takes up to two weeks to make it. If you wanted to do it the fast way, some people put like some, I don't know, something to, to, to change the color so it changes faster and then put some kind of spices to make it, um, to make the taste more similar. But it's not as good. You really need to take your time. That's why we don't make it very often. But once we do, we make a big, big, big bowl of bigos, which is delicious. Another one is something that reminds me of my, my childhood. And it's budyń, pudding. Budyń is a special kind of Polish pudding. So budyń, pudding. It's not exactly the same. So you can say, polski budyń jest specyficzny. Polski budyń jest specyficzny. Which basically means, Polish pudding is specific. Polish pudding is specific. And it, it is. Uh, in a way that it's, um, well, we usually eat it hot, sometimes, sometimes cold, but we usually eat it hot. We, we very often make it ourselves at home. So it is different than, uh, than other puddings I know. So it's more like a yogurt, uh, but we usually serve it hot and we, we have vanilla pudding or, or chocolate pudding, obviously. And there is raspberry pudding as well or strawberry pudding. And um, some people put oatmeal into it or, or like uh, put some um, kind of uh, syrup, like vanilla syrup or, or a raspberry syrup on, to on the top of it. And that's even more delicious. So please try it out. The next one is gołąbki. Gołąbki. 
gołąbki um, do not have a translation into English per se, so we just say gołąbki. And gołąbki is a like special rolled cabbage uh, inside of which we have uh, minced meat and we have rice also. And the proportion of meat and rice differ between houses and different households. For example, my mom put more rice than meat, but uh, some places they will in some places they will put more meat than rice and there's almost no rice or there's almost no meat or somewhere in between. And we put on, we put, um, tomato sauce over it, which is very delicious. Um, and lately I don't eat so much meat, so I, I kind of switch to vegetables or fish. So my mom, uh, is making me gołąbki with mushrooms instead of meat. That's another way of doing that. And then you can put mushroom sauce on the top of it or just the same tomato sauce. So if you have a Polish boyfriend or a Polish girlfriend, and you make the gołąbki for them, you can say, zrobiłam ci gołąbki. I made gołąbki for you. Zrobiłam ci gołąbki. I made you gołąbki. I made you gołąbki. Zrobiłam ci gołąbki. The next one is my absolute favorite. And I don't think any Polish person can live without it. And it's pierogi. Dumplings. You may know the name because it's become, it became very, very, very famous around the world. Pierogi, uh, which sometimes are referred to in English as pierogi, uh, also are called uh, dumplings or Polish dumplings, are this wonderful thing. We have uh, pierogi in many, 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 many different kinds. Like uh, they come in sweet, sour, whatever you want probably more than 100 different kinds, but one of the most uh, popular are pierogi ruskie, which you can translate as Russian pierog pierogi, but they are not Russian at all. Uh, they, are, they are very, very Polish. And you have uh, also pierogi with sauerkraut and with porcini, with, with mushrooms, and pierogi with strawberries, blueberries, whatever you like. You can put basically anything. You can put uh, spinach and cheese and whatever, whatever you like. But of course, since the Russian pierogi are the most popular, often people will say, najbardziej lubię pierogi ruskie. Najbardziej lubię pierogi ruskie. I like Russian pierogi the best. I like Russian pierogi the best. So what actually um, is this Russian pierogi? Um, it has inside cottage cheese and potatoes and uh, fried onion, uh, sometimes with bacon or like the small pieces of bacon. And you can put it on the top of this as well. And you can eat it with sour cream as well, which are it's very, 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 very delicious. It's highly recommended. Please be sure to try it out if you are in Poland. The next one is kiełbasa wędzona, smoked sausage. Kiełbasa wędzona, which just means smoked sausage, is very good in Poland. So people think that, uh, for example, Germany has very good sausages, but actually they come to Poland to buy our sausages. So be sure to try it. I know that some people refer uh, to, to this Polish sausage as kiełbasa in, in English. So it became that popular that it's actually a word in English, kiełbasa, which in Polish just means sausage, any sausage. Um, but the specific Polish sausage, it's, it's kiełbasa. And if, for example, you can say, Mama zrobiła kiełbasę wędzoną. My mom made smoked sausage. Mama zrobiła kiełbasę wędzoną. Kotlet schabowy. Pork chop. Kotlet schabowy means uh, pork chop. It's a very, 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 very popular dish for, for Polish lunch, uh, which in Polish we say dinner, not lunch, but it's actually lunch. For example, you can say na obiad zwykle jem kotlet schabowy z ziemniakami. So in English you would say, I usually have pork chop with potatoes for lunch. And that's true for, for many, many, many people in Poland, especially for Sunday, Sunday dinner. 
uh, or actually Sunday lunch, as I said, it's very, very often pork chop. So now we came to the desserts and we have krówki, fudge, fudge, which in Polish we say krówki. Krówki literally means cows or little cows. Um, and we call it uh, krówki because, uh, as you may know, fudge is made out of milk. So basically, it's very, very related to cows. <laughs> and that's our way of thinking. So, But if you say krówki, even if the brand is different, and sometimes they call it a different way, but everybody will call it krówki anyway. So, for example, you can say, Kupiłam sobie krówki. I bought fudge for myself. Kupiłam sobie krówki. Rosu. Rosu. Now we are going back to the lunchtime for a while. And let me introduce you to rosu. Rosu. So you can just say rosu. And if you don't really know what it is, let me explain it. Uh, it's like, um, is this a soup? It's like a meat-based soup served usually with noodles and maybe small carrots inside. Uh, maybe parsley on the top of it. Um, but not a lot of stuff inside. Just usually it's, it's, um, usually it's, uh, um, with chicken, but you don't pour it onto, onto your plate. Um, uh, you just use it to cook the soup itself. And of course, you use a lot of vegetables to cook it, but but you don't really use those vegetables. You may use it later to make the, to make another salad, but uh, rosu it's usually very clear as a soup. So, for example, you can say w niedzielę na obiad będzie rosu. For Sunday lunch, we will have rosu, which is true for many, many, many houses in Poland, and many people in Poland will eat rosu for Sunday. Uh, it's like, it's so much Sunday lunch. It's, that's really, really, really a very typical thing to eat. Pierniki, gingerbread. Now, um, going back to sweet stuff, um, we do have this type of cookies we eat for Christmas. And usually it's only for Christmas, although you can buy it all the year around. Uh, in a little bit different form and some people will buy it like this, but they will make it only for Christmas. It's too much um, hassle to make it and too much time. And it's called pierniki, pierniki, which means gingerbread cookies. So, for example, you can say mama zrobiła pierniki na święta. Mom made gingerbread cookies for Christmas. And... The thing about gingerbread cookies, pierniki, is that once you made it, you can put it into a jar and then keep it there all the year round. Basically, you can eat it almost till like next Christmas. It doesn't matter. They are actually getting better and better and better over the time. And I remember when I was little, I loved pierniki and my mom made it for Christmas and then she hid it somewhere. So I don't eat everything. And I basically always almost did. But uh, then, um, there was always one of those jars hidden and I found it around maybe summer and they were wonderful, super delicious. Basically, they never get old. It's a highly recommended Polish experience, so be sure to try it out. That's all for today. Thank you for listening. Today we did 10 Polish foods. What is your favorite Polish food? Please leave it in the comment and remember to like this video, subscribe to our channel and visit polishprod101.com for more content like that. See you! You may need to say it again, sorry. No, no! This time it... Yeah, that's the problem. You ask me to say six different things in one brief. <laughs> what is your favorite Polish... Polish... Blah, blah, blah.